11.23, starting at 11.23, 1 Corinthians 11.23. If you have it, say amen. If you need help, just say, Lord, help me. Amen. He's able. He's able. 1 Corinthians 11.23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is, is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he also took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant established by my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup and proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whatever, or excuse me, so therefore, whenever, or excuse me, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. So a man should examine himself in this way. He should eat the bread and drink the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many are sick and ill among you, and many have fallen asleep. If we were properly evaluating ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord, so that we may not be condemned with the world. Amen. Father, we thank you for your love, mercy, and your grace. We pray that you would pour out your spirit in a mighty and a powerful way. Open up the ears of your children that we may hear what thus says the Lord. We pray that you will have your way, Lord God. Fill this house with your glory. We thank you for the power that's in the blood of Christ that was shed on Calvary for the remissions of our sins. Thank you for the power that's in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the word, which is Jesus Christ. And the word is living and the word is profitable for correction rebuking and exhortation we pray now that you will give your people a deeper understanding of the lord's supper communion and the lord's table we thank you we praise you. we love you in jesus name let god's children say amen amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord glory be to god amen we thank god for a brand new day and an opportunity to get into his word. Amen. How many have had a challenged week this week? We got about four or five. Amen. Hey, okay, we got about six or seven had challenges this week. How many are glad that God has allowed you to make it through the week of challenges that you had? Amen. How many are glad that God has kept you by his love, mercy, grace, and his power? Amen. How many are still going through some things? All right, we got about four, five, six, or seven. We got some people that are being honest in the house. Amen. I already know you're going through. I read the book. It's in the book. <laughs> so I know you're going through. I don't know what you're going through, but I know you're going through. And the key word is through. God has taken you through. Amen. Amen. So what does that have to do with what we are talking about today? What we have read in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at verse 23. The theme is simple. Keep your eyes on Jesus. One more time. Keep your eyes on on Jesus. Now, let me see the hands of those who are going through. 
Amen. So make sure you write this down. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Underneath that, write this. Be committed. Be committed. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Be committed. And number three, stay submitted. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Be committed and stay submitted. Amen. All right, so we're going to get down and move forward into the word of God. I am excited about this message today, the Lord's Supper, and why is it that we call it the Lord's Supper or communion? How many people could explain what the Lord's Supper is all about to somebody else if, if they ask you, what is the Lord's Supper about? Why do you partake in the Lord's Supper? Why do we call it communion? And how many understand that the Lord's Supper is also called the Lord's Table? Somebody go to 1 Corinthians 10.21. 1 Corinthians 10.21. Amen. First one there and wants to read that. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians 10.21. Let me see the hand. Okay, Sister Renee. Go ahead then. 1 Corinthians 10.21. You cannot have part in the Lord's table and or the table of demons. Both exist. If it did not, she would not have read it. Amen. It's in the word of God. Amen. So one thing you need to understand about the Lord's table is that the Lord is the one who ordained the Lord's table. Amen. Not man's idea, God's idea. Everybody got that? The Lord's table, amen. Communion, the Lord's supper, supper, the Lord's table. So what you need to know, write down, you must be invited. And you must RSVP. Anybody ever got married or had a birthday or anniversary celebration and you sent out the invitations and at the bottom you said, please respond by RSVP by a certain anybody ever went there before everybody anybody ever witnessed that amen so the invitation goes out but you must accept the invitation and respond so in the kingdom that simply means jesus died on the cross for our sins was buried and rose on the third day if you want to receive this gift of eternal life amen you want to be a part of the kingdom then you must believe that jesus did die on the cross for your sins was buried and rose on the third day you must accept christ as lord and savior once you accept christ as lord and savior there's two things that we are called to do as believers don't answer the question but i just want to know how many people know the two sacraments that we are required and ordained to partake in once we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, which means we have acknowledged, yes, Lord, I am a sinner and I need a covering for my sin. I do believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose on the third day. So therefore, Lord, I repent of my sins. I invite you into my heart to be Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, save me. And then he says, okay, there's two things you got to do. Once you accept Christ as Lord and Savior, you are to be baptized. Baptized means to be submerged or go under. It's not a sprinkle because Jesus wasn't, uh, didn't put a toe in the grave. He didn't put a thumb in the grave. You hear what I'm saying? He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Does that make sense? So you have to be baptized in Christ submerged in to Christ hear what I'm saying so we must be baptized Matthew 28 says baptized in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Ghost Acts chap uh, chapter 2 Peter says repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus amen everybody got that so if we baptize in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Ghost we have been obedient if we baptize you in the name of Jesus, we have been obedient. 
Because you can't get to the Father without Jesus and you can't receive the Holy Ghost without Jesus. So therefore, if you know somebody who does not believe in Jesus Christ and they lie to you and say, well, I have a relationship with God. I serve a higher being. I'm spiritual. Let me give you what they just said in a three-letter word. Everybody ready? Lie. They just told you a lie. Hear what I'm saying? Because you can't have a relationship with God without Jesus, and you can't have the Holy Ghost without Jesus. So therefore, it makes every bit of sense to keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Hello, help me somebody. Amen. Anybody paying attention? Amen. So communion, uh, communion, cup of blessing. Somebody help me say cup of blessing. Amen. Anybody had a cup of blessing? Amen. Anybody had, any, had anything good to drink lately? You know what I'm saying? Something that's good, tasting, healthy. I'm not talking about alcoholic. I'm talking about good and healthy, like some vitamin C, some orange juice, pineapple juice, something good, you know what I'm saying, and healthy for you, right? Some may be drinking prune juice. Get your prune juice on. Amen. Amen. But have you had a cup of blessing? God wants to bless you with a cup of blessing. So I want you to visualize this being your cup, your house being your cup. Amen. And when you pour out, what are you pouring out of your cup? Amen. Is it something that tastes nasty? Is it something that's poisonous? Or is it a blessing coming out of your cup? Amen. Love, peace, joy, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, meekness, patience, self-control. What are you pouring? out hello help me somebody because you can only pour out what's in if stinking thinking is in that's what's coming out your mouth if positivity is in that's what's coming out your mouth if the word of God is, is in that's what's coming out your mouth and the most powerful thing that can come out your mouth is the word of God hello help me somebody help me somebody that is the most powerful thing that can come out of your mouth amen the word of God will change things and move things and move mountains. Amen. Save people. Give you a job when you lost a job. Give you a promotion when you need a promotion. I'm talking about the word of God to heal your body. Hello, help me somebody. The word of God will restore family ties. The word of God will strengthen you. Amen. Will encourage you. Will exhort you. Amen. The word of God is powerful. The word of God will change your mind. Change the way you thinking. And if your mind has not been changed in the way you thinking and stinking, Need you need to get in the word of God. Read this word. If you are still coming up with that list of I don't believe this, I don't believe that, get in the word and start reading a little bit more. If you don't believe this and don't believe that about the word of God, start praying a little bit more. If you want to understand a little bit more about the word of God, come to Sunday school, come to Bible study. If you want to know a little bit about, a little bit more about God, come to the house of the Lord. Amen. If you want to know, if you want faith a little bit more faith then you need to hear a little bit more word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so amen you want your faith to grow ask God to increase your faith ask God to open your ears so you can hear the word being preached a little bit more so you can have a little bit more faith hello help me somebody how many are asking God to increase your faith amen amen help my unbelief help my unbelief help my unbelief lord don't go bragging to people what you don't believe hello that makes no sense i don't believe jesus did this i don't believe jesus can heal this and he does well why do you keep expressing what you don't know about the god we serve hello somebody in here knows the word of god so those I don't believe it ain't going to make sense to the person who knows Christ as Lord and Savior that, one, that has a relationship. I'm talking about a tight relationship. Anybody know what a tight relationship is? You know, my homeboy, my homegirl, that's my boy, that's my girl. I'm talking about a tight relationship. That's my God. Hello, I don't care what you don't believe about my God. My God is telling the truth. You are the liar. My God can't lie. My God never could lie. The only thing that can come out of the mouth of God is the word of God because what he says has to come to past my God is the one who created heaven and earth my God is the one who created me and created you hello help me somebody my God is the one that got me to understand the word of God you need to plug into God amen plug into the word of God before you start bragging about what you don't believe and if you don't believe it, you're not shocking God no way <laughs> can you imagine God saying duh <laughs> and I believe well duh you don't know me I don't believe that. Either. Duh, you don't read the word. I don't believe that. Either. Duh, you don't pay attention when you're at Bible study. You're sleeping. Duh. 
All you know is Z's. Me, 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 me. Wake up and I don't believe because you're sleeping. You don't believe when you sleep. What you say? What you gonna get? Hello, help me somebody. If ain't God, if God ain't giving you dreams and visions, how you gonna get it when you're sleeping? When you're sleeping, that's to give you some rest, right? Faith comes by sleeping and sleeping in the house of God. Really? Faith comes by saying what your intellect says instead of what the word of God says. The God we serve, he's God. The God we serve is serious about the relationship that he has invited us into. The, the God we serve knows everything about you. Whether you told him or not, he still knows. And he's the God that said, I called you while you were in your mess. Why would I leave you just because you messed up again? Hello, if I don't help you get it right, you can't get it right. No way. That's why when the, the word is heard, hello, it's when you hear the word and you understand what God is saying, stop taking the focus off of you and put it right back on God. And let me help you because I went through, oh, this is a cute baby. I went through, see, that's what we're supposed to be childlike. See, I don't think she's paying attention. <laughs> Just paying attention. Amen. That's what God wants us to do. Pay attention to him. Amen. So I went through that stage where I thought, thought I was cleaning me up. I thought I was getting me ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to do God's will, God's work. So I got to change me. A few months later, I was crying. I said, Lord, how can you even love me? I started off changing me. Then found out I didn't have the power to change me. I said, I didn't have the power to change me. Y'all going to get it pretty soon. If I didn't have the power to, say, uh, say, to save me, I didn't have the power to change me. You don't have the power to change you. You don't have the power to save you. That's why it's not hard for me to praise God. It's not hard for me to worship God. It's not hard for me to say thank you to the Lord. I tried changing me. It didn't work. But when I tried it God's way, all I had to do is submit to his will, get in the word of God, worship him in spirit and in truth, praise him, thank, just be thankful for what he has done, got in his word, apply his word. If you do it, it works. Don't go out, open the car door, and then come back and say the car won't start. <laughs> well, did you put the key in the ignition? No. I just opened the door. I saw the ignition, and I had the keys in my pocket, though. But for some reason, the car didn't start. Hello, believer. I didn't believe. Well, did you open the book? No, but I brought it to church with me. I carry it everywhere I go. And I look like I'm doing something when I'm in church. I'm looking, I look like I'm reading it. Am I doing it? No, I didn't know I was supposed to do it. I thought I was just supposed to. Hello. How many love, uh, enjoy food? I don't say love. How many, how many enjoy food? I want you to think about your favorite dish. How hard would it be if your favorite dish was planted right in front of you? I mean, nice and hot right off the stove or off the grill ribs. Would it take much for you to eat it? If somebody said, go ahead and eat it, I made it for you. How many would smell it, look at it, and put it in the refrigerator? Say, I'll check it out tomorrow. And you hadn't eaten all day? And somebody made it specially for you? How many would go ahead and tear it up? And be embarrassed about asking for a second plate, but you ain't going to tell them you're embarrassed by it? Mm, that's good, that's good, that's mm, good. Would you like another? Well, okay. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah. So why is it so hard for us to eat what God has prepared? 
taste and see that the Lord is good. He didn't say look and see. He didn't say smell and see. He said taste and see that the Lord is good. How many have tasted to see that God is good? How many have tasted to see that the Lord is good? Amen. Thank God because it is a beautiful thing to have a relationship with the Lord, to get in the word, to be a doer of the word. And so for Christians, we are to partake in the Lord's Supper because it is a commandment. Because we're in covenant. Because we're in covenant, we obey his commandments. Covenant is simply a promise and an exchange of vows, if you would. Jesus, if you believe, you should not be put to shame. If you believe in the Lord, you will not be put to shame. He says, if you truly want to be my disciple, here's what you need to do. Deny self, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Action, verbs, amen, do. Well, I thought about becoming a disciple. Disciple means learner, follower, or student. Sister Latoya mentioned being a student, and she said she just kept on going to school. You know what God wants you to do? Keep on coming to school. Keep on being a student. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Write that down. When the student is ready... The teacher will appear. The Holy Ghost is the teacher if you did not know that. Hello. I said the Holy Spirit is the teacher. If you've already accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, the teacher is on the inside of you. And when you're ready, the teacher will teach. Hello, help me somebody. Not that he ever quits, but he who has an ear, let him hear what thus says the Lord. Amen. Couple blessing. blessings. 1 Corinthians 10, 16. Amen. We're going to get through this. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 16. 1 Corinthians 10, 16. Whoever has it first, raise your hand. Oh, Sister Rachel, you go ahead and read it. You had that, that peace of mind like you already got it. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 16. Okay, read it again. The bread and the cup. The bread, anybody recall, I believe it's in John the sixth chapter when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Huh? Anybody recall that? The bread represents the body of Christ that was broken for us. Not a bone was broken, but his flesh was broken. Anytime you get hit with a whip on your back, and whoever's doing the whipping is doing it with all their strength, you can best believe your back will split. You hear what I'm saying? So he took 40 minus one stripes so that you would be healed. I said he took 40 minus one stripes so that you and I would be healed. And he says it this way. By his stripes, we what? We're healed. Amen. Jesus, the bread of life. The cup represents the blood that was shed on Calvary for the remissions of our sins. The cup represents what? remissions of sins forgiveness of sins has always been in the blood because that's where life is if your body runs out of blood what will the coroners call that dead d-e-a-d -E like the church without the holy spirit d-e-a-d -E how many have had a taste of the Lord and say, oh, I'm not going to a dead church. I got to have some rhema word. I got to hear from God. I got to know that the Holy Ghost is in that house. I got to know that God is moving by his might. I got to know that there's life in Christ. There's blessings in Christ. There's miracles, signs, wonders, and miracles in Christ. There's love in Christ. There's forgiveness in Christ. There's mercy in Christ. There's grace in Christ. What I'm trying to tell you, there's life in the name of Jesus. There's life in Christ. He is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. The cup of blessing, the bread and the wine. His body was broken for us and his blood was shed for us. His body was broken for us and his blood was shed for who? I want y'all to really get this. If it were not by the stripes, would we be healed? 
You hear what I'm saying? Mother Kimball, cancer had to leave your body, right? In the name of Jesus, it had to go. How many years ago? Hello, I want y'all to know there's power in the name of Jesus, power in the blood of Christ. Cancer had to go and can't come back. Hello, help me somebody. 25 years, hello. In the name of Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, there's healing in the name of Jesus. See, I want you to understand cancer is nothing to take lightly. I don't even think of flu is something that you take lightly. Flu, you don't want to do nothing. Your body hurts and aches. And that means you may have to stay in bed three days. And that's to me, that's like, uh-uh, I don't have time to waste, Lord. Get me healed like yesterday, Lord. Amen. I don't care what it is. If it's a sniffle, Lord, take away the sniffle. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I need to be healed. I got too much to do. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to serve God. I want to serve him. Wait on him and serve, right? Well, I'm waiting, I'm serving. I'm waiting and I'm serving. I'm waiting, I'm serving. Amen. Lord, what would you like today? What would you like me to do today, Lord? I woke up to serve this morning. You know what I'm saying? I woke up to serve this morning. And I'm still waiting on God for some things. But while I'm waiting, I'm serving. Y'all don't get it yet, but you will. Amen. Wake up to wait and wake up to serve. Hello, help me somebody. It's a package deal. Wake up to wait and serve. How may I help you, Lord? How may I help you, Lord? How may I serve you today, Lord? What would you like me to do, Lord? Uh, this is going on and that's going on, Lord. That doesn't feel good. That's kind of painful. But while I'm waiting on my breakthrough, Lord, what would you like me to do today? Who would you like me to love on? Who do you want me to pray with? Who do you want me to pray for? And love is so important in the kingdom. I said, love, and this is what we're going through right now. We're looking at God's love toward us because even while we were yet sinners, he showed his love toward us by having Jesus die on the cross. He didn't wait till we got it right because we would never get it right. But while we were yet still sinners, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, was buried, rose on the third day. Romans 5, 8, Romans 5, 8, Romans 5, 8. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, was buried, rose on the, uh, rose on the third day. Amen, amen. Cup of blessing. You, you accept Christ as Lord and Savior, you partake of the Lord's Supper, and I'm going to give it to you like this. You've been invited, you have accepted, you partake of the Lord's Supper. The cup represents the blood that was shed for the remissions. See, y'all don't get it yet, huh? If your sins have been forgiven, you are too blessed to be stressed. I'm trying to tell you. If God has forgiven you of all of your sins, your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins, if God has forgiven you, you're too blessed to be stressed. You know where your new home is. Because you have the Holy Ghost, that is the guarantee you shall be in his presence. You'll see him as he truly is one day. See, that's, that's where peace comes in. I don't know how I'm leaving this earth, but I know where I'm going when I do. Hello, help me somebody. I don't know how I'm leaving, but I know where I'm going. And I know that I know that I know when God picks me up, it'll be on a cloud. Amen. I don't know how. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing because no matter how heavy you are, Doctor may say you may need to lose 22 pounds, 36 pounds, 40 pounds, don't matter how many, you still weigh enough to make it. To the cloud. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Because when you make it to the cloud, you're going to have your new heavenly body. You ain't going to need no doctor to tell you how much you need to lose or how much you need to gain. You're going to weigh just what you need to weigh when you get your new heavenly body and meet the Lord in the clouds and the air. Oh, y'all don't believe that, huh? Okay. We'll go through scripture. Breaking a bread. So when we break... Uh, 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 breaking of bread, do communion, Lord's Supper. It's also called breaking bread, breaking bread, breaking bread. In the early church, used to go to, they used to go from house to house breaking bread together. Now, we also look at it as what? We can go house to house and eat some ribs together, huh? <laughs> Putting food on the table. You don't have no food, come over. You can eat some food at my table, right? The, the church looked out for the church. Somebody say the church was looking out for the church. And when the church looks out for the church, guess what happens? First of all, the world will see that you belong to Jesus by the love, by the way you love one another. And then it'll provoke the unbelievers to be jealous and say, you know what? I think I want to be a Christian because over there they love. They know how to love. They know how to. And I want to see and know the God they serve. So 
when you love, when we love right, it provokes unbelievers to want to say, hmm, what church you go to? They really saying, who's this God you serving? But they don't know how to say it that way. So they say, what church you go to? What's the name of your church? Oh, it's God's house. It's called Greater Light Family Church. One thing you're going to run right into when you come here is love. Hello. That's what we preach and teach, the love of God. That's what you, I don't care who you are, believer, unbeliever, you're going to be met by some love when you get here. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we ain't judging because you saved or not saved today. Hello, help me somebody, but we're going to preach so you do get saved. And I don't know if you're getting saved today or next week, but I'm going to love on you. I don't know if it's going to take six months, but I'm going to still love on you. I was able to be on film uh, this week and tell the truth because some people are lying on Christians. What? <laughs> lying on Christians? You know they lied on Jesus, right? <laughs> you know they're still lying on Jesus, right? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Trying to lie on about the God we serve, right? Think about, man, pride. You're going to call Jesus a liar. going to call God a liar. going to call the word a liar. Well, I don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> You keep it to yourself. <laughs> Just love on them, but you know the truth. You discern it. Lord, open their ears, open their eyes so they can see the truth and hear the truth, Lord God. They don't even have a clue what they're saying. And the more, the closer you get to the Lord, the more you hear some people just sound foolish. Foolish. And like, Lord, please open it. They don't know. Talking about the blind leading the blind, that should mean something to you. As you start growing in Christ, you should start understanding, oh, what was I doing Kicking it with him. What was I doing? Kicking it with her and thought they were the wise one. Meanwhile, they're calling you stupid because now you know Christ. They're calling you Bible thumper. And, oh, there goes those Christians. You know, that's how we got our name, right? There goes those Christians again, those who are following Jesus. When they gave that, that name in the book of Acts, it wasn't to glamorize they call themselves talking. You know, people ever talk behind your back? Oh, don't even trip. You know, she go to church now, so she too good to drink vodka with us now. She too good for the tequila shot now. Oh, she too good to puff, puff, pass now. And I'm not talking about cigarettes. <laughs> and that's what you want them to say about you. Because that means they see a change in you. One of the excuses is the enemy don't want to come to church, they say, because they don't want to be another hypocrite. But when they see the change in you, they don't understand what's going on. Why? Because you used to be just like them. We used to be just like them. Hello, they weren't dropping it like it's hot by themselves. They had some help, right? <laughs> they weren't pat, pat, or puff puff pass by themselves. They wasn't doing shots by themselves. It's kind of funny. We were at the wedding yesterday, and somebody said, oh, watch. Watch. It's going to happen in a minute. <laughs> I go outside. I get ready to go outside. The dance floor was empty. I stayed outside for about an hour talking to some brothers there. <laughs> I come back in. The floor was crowded. <laughs> it was some kind of shuffle. <laughs> and doing this and doing that. Then once it got on, I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> I leaned over and said, the alcohol kicked in. <laughs> Everybody thought they was on dance fever. <laughs> Some thought they were just, hey. <laughs> they thought they were the best dancer on the floor. I said, wow. And I understand it because I used to be there. <laughs> so it's just funny to me. It's like, wow, I can see the difference. Before I was a part of it, now I can see the difference. Doesn't mean I don't dance. I still dance. Still cut a little, little rug, a little floor, amen. But I don't have to do it because I got alcohol in my system. <laughs> I do it now because I'm with my wife. Come on, baby, let's go dance. <laughs> we hear some songs that still say, hey, that's my song. <laughs> <laughs> See, I even go a little further. Lord, thank you that I can dance. Hey, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I don't even take that for granted. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My boo, look at my baby. My baby looking good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
Who has 1 Corinthians 10, 16? <laughs> we didn't read that yet, right? <laughs> we did? Amen. Let's reread it. <laughs> Who's there? Let's reread that. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and read it, Sister Renee. <laughs> Two people real quick. Come on. I need two people real quick. Real quick, real quick. There's one. I need one more. Come on. All right, sister, coming from this side. Amen. Joshua, Joshua will be the saved or the believer. Henry's going to play the unbeliever. You ready for this now? The only difference between these two as far as where they will live eternally it's not that Henry was a professional bank robber. It's not that he robbed 7-Eleven well. It's not that he was player player. <laughs> it's not that he had AK-47 shooting up people. Okay. Joshua is over here. And it's not because he was so great, so good, 10 college degrees, straight A student. The only reason why Joshua is going to heaven, and the reason why we'll call his name Hank instead of Henry Hank. The only reason why Hank is not going to heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not about how good someone is or how bad someone is. It's about the blood. If he has accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, he has the blood of Christ. And when he has the blood of Christ... Let me show you something here. He has a covering for his sins. Still in this fleshly body, but the Holy Spirit dwells in this body now. Now he is the temple of the Lord. He has no covering. He has covering because he has accepted Jesus Christ. He has no covering because he has denied Jesus Christ. Now, let's say both of them have robbed banks. Let's say both of them were player, 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 player from the Himalaya. Okay. <laughs> let's say both, both of them play shoot them up, bang, bang, right? West side, east side, yay, yay. Let's sort of <laughs> but yet and still. One gets to go to heaven and have eternal life. The other one has to go to hell and have eternal punishment, live in eternal punishment. And it's only because the blood of Christ covers his sins. He received it. He believed it. He received it. He accepted it. So now he gets to partake of the Lord's Supper and he's to be baptized. Amen. Amen. Go under, amen, be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be baptized in the name of Jesus, right? He can try to partake of the Lord's Supper. He can even be baptized. Go in a wet center or dry center, come out a wet center because the heart has to be right with God. It's not a pretend from the outward appearance. God judges the what? The heart. He knows the what? The heart. He knows whose hearts are right with him right now. He knows who's faking and jaking. He knows who's struggling. I want to. I want to. No, I don't want to go to. Ah. He knows. But the only reason why he has eternal life is because he has a covering for his sin. Still in the flesh. Holy Ghost in here. Still in the world, but no longer of the world. He wants to do right. And if he doesn't want to do right, God will get him to that point where he wants to do right. Still saved, just got to go through a little bit more flesh. You know, some people have just a little bit more flesh to go through. You know what I'm saying? When you go deeper and deeper and deeper, God has to do some things to help us out. So we say, yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Because you can be saved in the backslide. Hear what I'm saying? Amen. Hear what I'm saying? If he does what he did, he too can have eternal life. 
<laughs> you believe Jesus died on the cross of your sins and buried rose on the third day? You repent of your sins and invite him in? <laughs> you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? I do. Give him a, a hand. He's saved. Amen. <laughs> he said, we're going to cut this short. It's short. It's a short. <laughs> We're going to cut this one short. <laughs> Amen. Wise decision. Amen. So when you're saved, now you examine yourself. If you're not saved, don't worry about it because you're going to lie about it anyway. <laughs> Hello. I'm going to keep it real. I don't know why you talk about the past. I don't know why you do testimonies. Here, let me reply. I know why you don't testify <laughs> and do testimonies. And because you spoke, now I know why you don't understand. You know why? You got to do what the Bible says do. You can read it. Somebody can read it to you. But if you're not applying, don't expect the cup of blessing if you're not doing what God has called you to do. In the kingdom... Coming to this table means you must be saved. You must be a son or daughter of the most high God. You must believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. And it is an expression of an inward commitment. You are, you are partaking of the bread. Jesus Christ is the bread. You're partaking of the cup. The cup represents the blood of Christ that was shed on Calvary for the remissions of your sins. So because you are saved, you partake of the Lord's Supper. Don't be that one. Hear what I'm about to say. I don't care if you're saved or unsaved. Keep coming to the house of the Lord. One day you'll mess around and get saved. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. But don't touch this until you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible says if you do, you bring damnation unto yourself. Because you're saved, don't you dare say, I lied this week, so I can't partake of the Lord. You are a liar when God saves you. What you talking about? <laughs> All of a sudden, you didn't lie for the first time. <laughs> Hello? Do what he tells you to do. What do you do with the lie? Lord, please forgive me for lying. And then get your clean self up here and partake of the Lord. Somebody say, get your dirty self. Get your clean self up here. When you repent, God is faithful. When you confess, God is faithful to forgive you of your sins. Don't do it the way I did it. I thought I had to work this and work and earn this thing. I thought I had to change me. I didn't have the power to do so. And because I didn't have the power to do so, I broke down and told the Lord, I can't do this. I'm trying to do it, but I keep messing up. I'm not going to be that fake Jake person that says, no, I've never sinned. I'm, not, I'm perfect. I'm upright. I can't lose my salvation. No, you can't lose your salvation, but don't try to tell me that because you think you're perfect. But if you're saved, let me help you. You are perfect in Christ because God calls those things that are not as though they are. He knows how the story ends. You just got to walk it out. Hello, help me somebody. God knows how the story ends. While you stressing and letting the devil make you think you can lose your salvation, you're not good enough to partake of the Lord's Supper. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. Hello. You didn't die on the cross for your own sins. Don't let the devil fool you. If you are, hello. How many people got some, have some children in the house? How many will allow your children to come eat with you? If your child is hungry, I don't care what sin they did. If they just said, Mama, Daddy, can I have a meal? Would you say, no, you're a liar. You can't eat here. You're a little fornicator. Can't have any of these ribs. Can't have any of this salmon. Is there anybody that would say no to your child if your child was hungry? No. All those that feed your child, no matter what they have done, raise your hands real quick. So if you will feed your children if they're hungry, what do you think God will do? God is not stressing over your sin. He's not stressing over our shortcomings. Because he knows discipline is added to his love. love. Love comes with discipline. Discipline comes with love, let me say. 
It comes with his program. If he loves you, he disciplines you. If he does not discipline, you know what he says? You don't belong to him. How many know you belong to him? Amen. So how many say, Lord, help me to get it right? Oh, don't say if you don't mean it now, but if you want God to help you, say, Lord, help me to get it right. So you know, you, you know what you just asked for? You just said, Lord, help me to be blessed. Lord, help me to be blessed. I want to be too blessed to be stressed. I tried stress. Stress don't overweigh blessed. Blessed feels a lot better than stress. I'm going to tell you now. Blessed feels a whole lot better than stress. And it looks better on you. Blessing looks so much better on you. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you. It looks so much better when you smile versus when you frown. And guess what? You're going to burn calories both ways. You'll burn calories frowning and you'll burn calories smiling. But you might as well get your smile on. Hello, help me somebody. You might as well get your smile on. It'll express the joy that's on the inside of you. And if you have not plugged into that joy, you need to ask God uh, uh, for a deeper understanding of what salvation really means. Gift of uh, eternal life really means. And when it mean, and what the word means when he says he will order your steps. The problem is you think you're ordering your own steps. <laughs> Lord, I don't know how I got here. Really? You keep telling everybody I'm in control, but you don't know how you got here? I don't know how I got in the lion's den. Oh, really? Oh, Lord, the fire's hot. I don't know how I got in the fiery furnace. <laughs> I just don't understand, Lord. You're a God like Santa Claus. Nothing ever happens bad once I'm saved. Nothing ever hurts again once I'm saved. <sighs> if it does, he's pruning you. You know what pruning means? I was able to be a landscaper for a minute, so I learned how to prune roses. So now when I see roses that are not pruned, it bothers me because I know the process. And if you're not pruning, you're not showing love for the process. A lot of people have rose bushes, but they don't prune them. Hello. So they don't grow and look beautiful like they should look because they're not pruning them. The dead stuff needs to be cut off and has to be cut off at a certain angle. It's cut off at a certain angle because once it's, let's say you cut it at a, a slight angle, the stuff, little stuff on the inside comes out and seals it right there amen so there's another bud that has to come forth because that other place was stopped so now it's got to come forth and when you go through things that's what happens Latoya you got to come forth because he who's on the inside of you is not doing it so you quit give up or commit suicide but what he does is he forces you to come out the nest so that you can fly and if it looks like you're gonna fall he'll go ahead and swoop you up and put you back in the nest and then kick you out again and then if it looks like you're gonna fall again he'll swoop you up put you back in the nest and push you out again because he's called for you to soar like an eagle to fly on top of your circumstances. So all that stuff that's going on, he's just bringing the best out of you. I don't care how painful it is. He's bringing the best out of you. It does not make sense, huh? Well, if God, if you did it this way, I can go do this for you. If you do it this way, I can go do that for you. Uh-oh, my mom's smiling. She knows. That gives me the okay. She smiled. <laughs> my mom said, I can go to these countries and preach the word if you heal my body. He said, that don't stop you from going to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so we do what we want to do, huh? <laughs> but when God wants to do something, it's got to be, if you want me to do this, Lord, I need this, 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 and this. But we don't let that stop us from going to the party, the wedding, out of the country. How many been out of the country? How many been to Hawaii? How many been to at least one good wedding? <laughs> Hopefully it was your own. Amen. I <laughs> think <laughs> what I'm saying is I hope you didn't go to a wedding. <laughs> And you felt everybody else's wedding was better than your wedding. Amen. So whether you went as married or single, amen. How many been to a good wedding? How many been to a good birthday party? I heard a whoop whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can do all that, why are we still giving God excuses? Christ is on the inside of you. How come we got to just do, I mean, I mean, really? 
if Jesus was to come back today, how many know that you know that you know that you would meet him in the clouds? Let me help somebody. Everybody want some help? That's where your joy comes from. That's where your joy comes from. So why would you let Satan steal your joy when he can't steal your eternal life? Why would you let him steal your joy when he can't steal your gift? He can't steal your room. Oh, y'all will get this. See, your gift that God gives you is irrevocable. So if he doesn't take it back, you think he's going to let the devil take it from you? And God says it's irrevocable? And I said, why would you allow him to steal your joy when you know you're gifted? To steal your room? Y'all didn't get that part. Your gift will make room for you. Hello, help me somebody. Your gift will make room for you. How many got a job? How many got a business opportunity? How many got dreams and visions? How many got it? How many got that in there? You know, you know, you know. I've got to be an entrepreneur. I've got to be financially independent. I can't do that. I cannot live this way. Why? There's something on the inside of me that will not let me settle. I cannot settle because Christ in me won't let me settle. I got to go for the gusto. I got to go for greatness. I got to go for excellence. The God in me, the God in me, the God in me won't let me settle. And I don't need to use people to get there. My gift will make room for me, so I will get there. You don't need to manipulate people. You don't need to try to control anybody. God in you wants you to know ain't nobody greater than God. Ain't nobody more powerful than God. Can't nobody do you like Jesus can. Can't nobody open up no door for you like Christ can. Are there some entrepreneurs in the house? The Bible I read says that God will give you wisdom to get wealth. If you're ready for the wealth, which means you're going to use it for kingdom's sake. There's some of you. God knows your heart right now. You're going to have what you ask for. And some, you have not because you ask not. But God has to take everybody through the process so that when he gives it to you, Satan can't take it from you. You'll be able to discern what's of God and what's of the enemy. There's greatness on the inside of you if there's Christ on the inside of you. When you partake of the Lord's Supper, remember you're in covenant with God. You're fellowshipping with God and fellowshipping with one another. You hear what I'm saying? You are fellowshipping. We're called to fellowship one toward another, to share in, to watch out for one another, to take care of one another, to pray for one another. And you got to be careful because sometimes the enemy will send an imposter. Yeah, the enemy will send an imposter. Always point others to Jesus Christ. Always. He is our protector. He is our provider. Some will come your way to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You need to discern. Some of the biggest tricksters come to the house of God. You know what I'm saying? You do your homework. A lot of churches have been fooled by gimmicks and schemes. So-called members, oh, we got to do this for the church. Big scam right there in Texas and Los Angeles at one time. And T.D. Jakes went on. I heard he went online and told everybody, look out for this person here. Look out. He's coming to the churches to scam the churches out of money. How much money? Big money. 
He's, he's telling the truth. I'm not talking about $1,000. I'm talking about big money. Amen. So you must keep Jesus first. The dream I have does not override. And let me say it this way. My dreams don't override the vision that God has for me. So I line up to find out what God has for me. When I find out what God has for me, I cannot be lazy about it. I cannot be stuck. Be stuck. You know what survival mode is? Survival mode is you just, just let me get by. Oh, Lord, just let me get by. Why would you just want to get by when God owns everything? Think about that. Did Solomon struggle financially? Did King David struggle financially? Did Job? And Job got hit hard by the devil and still came out a winner. Everything the devil stole, he got back. Y'all don't hear me. I'm talking about God double for his trouble. So when you partake of the Lord's Supper, remember the covenant, the promise. God has promised you some things, but you have to do what God tells you to do to line up for those blessings in the book. Does that make sense? You got to line up to his word. He says, if you do this, I'll do this, right? Line up to the word, line up to the blessing. Don't rob God. Don't rob him of, of your time. Don't rob him of, of, of the money. He doesn't need the money. It's to help us to recognize where the money comes from, where the blessings come from. Hear what I'm saying? Be reminded of the covenant. Be reminded of fellowship with God, fellowship one toward another. Be reminded of promises that God has made you and the promises that you must keep to him. Does that make sense? understand it's intimacy God says I love you when we partake of the Lord's Supper it's expressions of our love back toward him you gotta understand there's intimacy going on and God blessed us with marriage to, t to get a look at what this Lord's Supper is all about why do you say that because he tells the church the men let me say, love your wives like Christ loved the church. He died for the church. And because he died for the church and rose from the dead, we are now able to partake of the Lord's Supper, the communion, the Lord's table, the Lord's table. Hear what I'm saying? The Lord's table. And he's saying, you are my children, so you can come on up here and partake of the Lord's Supper. Remember most importantly, the love that God has for us. The love, hear what I'm saying? The love. When you love properly, you will not be intimidated by people, jealous, afraid that they're going to do better than you. You love like Christ's love. So let me share this with you now. Here's the lie that some people are telling about the church. Some people are saying Christians hate those who are gay. They're saying that Christians hate lesbians and LGBT. No, let me correct all you liars that are saying that. Devil, Satan, correct all you unclean spirits and help the body of Christ as well. We don't hate anybody. That's not what God teaches us. Our, our Lord and Savior don't teach us to hate anybody. But he does teach us to tell the truth. He does teach us. So if you ask me what I think about it, I'm going to just tell you what God said about it. I ain't going to just say, no, you want to get me into the flesh. No, don't worry about the flesh. I'm going to tell you what God said about it. We don't hate. There's some player players. There's some homosexuals. My job is to preach and teach you the truth so you come out of that stuff. That stuff ain't from God. Hello? Love the sinner, hate the sin. We're saved because somebody loved us, huh? Yeah, God pulled all of us out of something, right? So if I didn't highlight my sin and say it's right, how are you going to try to highlight your sin and say it's right? I recognize my sin as a sin. That's what it was. I was a sinner. Hello? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
every single one of us, if we're saved, every single one of us has been delivered from something. You may not tell it all, but everybody's been delivered from something. Hello, help me somebody. And how many know that God still loves you? Amen. So I don't care who you meet. You meet Jane, that's really John. Tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. Love on them. I got a chance to meet a transgender this week and hear his side of the story and embrace him. Hey, all right. Praying to God, save you. Just want to tell you about a God that can save anybody. He loves you so much. He even died for that sin. Hello. Yeah, God can save. And I thank God because he gave me plenty. <laughs> I got about seven, probably eight people I know that have been delivered from the lifestyle. Thank God for testimonies. That makes it even bolder. And, and I got more confidence. God can stand on the fact that the God I serve can save anybody. The God I serve can change anybody. Don't you dare tell me that you stuck and my God can't unstick you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I don't care if you're some quicksand. Sinking slowly. I got a God that can pull you out quickly. I don't care how fast you're sinking. The God I serve can pull you out quickly. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And once you accept Christ as Lord and Savior, you go ahead and get baptized. It's an outward expression of an inward commitment. I used to be that. I'm not that anymore. I used to be that way. I'm not that way anymore. And because God saved me, now I can go back in and pull others out. Is there anybody that want to see people saved, healed, and delivered? Don't you dare tell me God cannot heal you from cancer. Don't tell me God cannot heal you from being a player player. Don't tell me God can't deliver you from LGBTQ plus plus, whatever the letters are. God can heal you and deliver you from it. And we have the capacity to love on people while they're going through the process of being cleaned up. Why are they going through the process of being changed? God has blessed us with the capacity to love even our enemies. So you hear anybody telling a lie, oh, Christians hate you? No, not this Christian. Not real Christians. There you go. And I approve that commercial. Yeah, real Christians love in spite of. Hear what I'm saying? And I'm going to help everybody. The worst attack don't come from them no way. There's some family members that will uppercut you more than they will. Jesus was betrayed from the inside. Don't you fear anyone on the outside. You love them so they can come on the inside. You hear what I'm saying? You love them so they can come on the inside. Hear what I'm saying? Love conquers hate. Amen. We're going to continue this this series. We're going to be on this for a minute. And the next series uh, we want to teach on is the fact that this world as we know it, this earth as we know it, will be destroyed. So we we want to start studying what that looks like and what that looks like as far as when Christ returns. What that looks like to see that Christ is on his way. Signs and wonders, things that God told us to look at. So we're going to start studying that because we want to make sure we are well equipped. We don't have time to waste. You hear what I'm saying? And everybody in the body of Christ is important and your gift is needed. I said everyone who is saved, who believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Everyone is important, and your gift is needed for such a time as this. I got three that got it. Okay. Your gift is needed. Plenty of room. Where's your gift at? 
plenty of room. Let me say it another way. The harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. The harvest is plenty. There is plenty of people that need to be saved. Plenty that are ready to be saved. So we got to get out of ourselves. Stop playing with all this stuff that's not profiting us. Put some things, put everything in the hands of God and start loving on other people to get them saved. You hear what I'm saying? Stop fighting on the inside. Hello. Why are we fighting on the inside when the real fight is on the outside? So if we're fighting on the inside, when are we going to ever get to the real fight that's on the outside? You hear what I'm saying? So we're in, this is training grounds to be trained up, to love on somebody. It could be your family that God's going to use you to save. It could be your coworkers. Hello, help me somebody. Anybody on the job have to witness and pray? How many on the job and God already has you praying for some people? May not have you praying with them yet, but how many God has you praying for some people? Hello, help me somebody. Let God use you wherever he takes you, because wherever he takes you, remember your feet are beautiful if he's sending you somewhere. How beautiful are the feet of those? How many got some beautiful feet? Got one, two, three. I got three. I got three. I got three. Amen. I got four. Amen. See, some of you know you've been sent. Amen. I'm not talking about the, 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 the toenail polish. I ain't talking about that. But when you know that God has sent you somewhere, you got some beautiful feet, whether you're, you're about to say somebody already knew what I was going. Doesn't matter what everybody else think. You got to know I got some beautiful feet. Hello, help me somebody. Because it's spiritual. Every day is a spiritual day. So you must have some. Ask God if you have not been sent, Lord, say, uh, just tell Lord, Lord, send me. Send me. I need a pedicure. Send me, Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> With that, <laughs> Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose on the third day. We must understand how powerful the word is, how powerful the Lord's Supper is, how powerful the communion and the Lord's table, how important it is to God. To who? Yeah. To God. We need to make sure we're inviting other believers to the house of God. Because plenty has dropped out of church in America. And we want them to drop right back in. Hello, help me somebody. Somebody say, Lord, send me, send me, send me, send me. Yeah, don't cut my blessing out. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose on the third day. If you have not truly accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, come today. You can come right now, stand on your feet. Amen. This is not about anybody else. It's about your you receiving the eternal life it's about you and the Lord you want to be saved you want to make it to heaven everybody hear what I'm saying the, the doors of the church been open one day they're going to shut though because the Lord is coming back so one day those doors will be shut our job is to lead as many to Christ as we can while the door is still open so we need some committed people fresh commitment to god lord however you want to use you use me use me however you want to use me use me if you're already saved just raise your hand amen and we're going to teach you how to lead people to christ so everyone repeat after me dear heavenly father i do believe that jesus christ died on the cross for my sins was buried and rose on the third day I repent of my sins I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior in the mighty name of Jesus save me now give God a good hand clap of praise for the gift of eternal life amen as you're standing, I want you to prepare for tithes and offering. Tithe is just a tenth of whatever God gives you, 10%. So if you have 100, God bless you with, $10 is 10%. 100, 10% of 1,000 is 100. 10% of 100,000 is 10,000. 10% of a million is 100,000. Somebody ought to get, get excited about that. I said, somebody ought to get excited about that. In the hands of the ushers.